Hey there, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, I'm going to be discussing Python syntax for lead code. We're gonna go through loops, variables, objects, everything you need to know to get ready using Python for your programming interviews. Let's get into it. First things first, let's take a look at variables. In Python, variables are super simple. You don't need a var keyword, you don't need anything like that. Just use a regular word, uh, avoid using strange underscores or like dollar signs, anything like that, and you should be fine and it should be a variable in Python. Uh, we set the variable hello equal to a string like that. We can set it equal to a one like this. Uh, variables can also represent arrays, objects, a bunch of stuff like that. Okay, so I think now is a good time to discuss classes. I'll paste in a popular one here. You're going to recognize this is the list node from LeetCode. If you're worried where I got this, this is the node that LeetCode uses whenever you're working with a linked list, for example. You can define a node like this. You say list node, and then you look at its initialize function, and then you look at the parameters. You ignore self, and then you can pass an x for its value. So we can say list node of one. We now have a node that has a value of one. Uh, let's just print uh, node.val to just see that works. So we can go in here, it's printing one, which is exactly what we'd expect. That means we have a node with the value of one. And then we'd expect, uh, let's see, node.next, its other property to be none currently, gonna be none there. And yeah, so now we have a node initialized and you can change these values and the values will change. There's nothing strange that happens in Python. If you change the value to set it equal to 10, and this is how you do that, by the way. If you print it again, it's going to now be set to 10. So that's all you really need to know for linked list questions. Okay, now we can start to get into loops, which are super common throughout the code, looping through things, super common in programming in general. So we can initialize an array like this. One, two, three, four. If you want to loop through this array forwards, we can say for i in range length of array. And so this is going to pretty much give us the index values of 0, 1, 2, 3. That's what's going to happen here. It's going to give us 0, 1, 2, 3. And then if you want to get the actual values from where they are, so we can say R of that index, so R of I, you'll see in this paste here, it's going to be R of 0 first, R of 1 first. And so we can say Python main.py again. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's make one of these like 10 just to show you guys where it is. And so it's 1, 10, 3, 4. And so it's looping through the array, showing us every single value in the array. Now, if we wanted to loop through an array backwards, we can use a while loop, for example. For a length of r minus 1, we can start our index at the back of our array. And then we can say, while well, this index is greater than or equal to 0, because 0 is an index in our array, we can then do index minus equals 1. And then let's just print the indexes to show you guys what's happening. I'll do a print statement in the middle to uh, differentiate these, these two. All right, so you're saying, you're seeing here, it's going three, two, one, zero. And so this is going forward through an array. This is going backwards through an array. Two important things for lead coding. One quick note is you can also use this range operator to go backwards in an array by pretty much doing a bunch of minus ones is the way I remember it. But this isn't always the best, but as you'll see here, um, let's make this go print I again. It's gonna give you three, two, one, zero. The basic idea of what's happening here is it's saying start the range at the last index and then go tell negative one, and it doesn't include this negative one, so it stops at the zero index like you'd expect here. And then it says decrement negative one each time. I know that's kind of confusing. I'm just showing you guys what's possible with Python. All right, so we can do this really quick. Take a look at Boolean statements. We can just store Booleans like this, return results equal to true or false. We can also say results equal to true and false. If you want, you can, make, you can use parentheses to make more complicated statements like this. And if anything evaluates to a true or a false, it can be used just like in any other regular programming language. There's nothing to specific to Python. Also, if you want to say result is equal to two is equal equal to one, this is going to be false. And so if we print this result here, we can show you guys that this is going to show false. And then if we want to do an example of a true operation, we can say result is equal to one, equal equal to one. And then we print that result show you guys, it's gonna give us a true. And so whether you're saying one is equal to one in a loop, whether you're saying two is equal to one in like a, you know, whatever expression you're doing, it's gonna to evaluate to a true or false just like it would in any other language. Something pretty overpowered using Python for programming interviews is the max and min operators or functions. So if we have a result and we set it equal to max of five comma two, and then we print that result, the integer that's the max one is going to get saved into result. And so for here, for example, it's going to be five. If we instead say result is equal to the min of five comma two, then you'll see here, it's gonna be two. This isn't really a leak code tutorial, but this code right here, max and min, is going to reduce a bunch of those if else statements, checking if a value is larger than another. It's gonna make your code way more simple, so use these when you can. All right, so something super important for leak code is dictionaries. You can set a dictionary, it's just a variable, and you can set it equal to an empty dictionary by just using these curly braces, making them empty. 
In Python, dictionaries look like what you'd expect. I'll make an example one here where I say key is equal to value. Uh, they look just like this. I'm pretty sure it's common in most languages. And so if you wanna say dictionary of uh, 10 is our key, and you wanna set it to a value, we can say it's equal to Cooper codes. It's important to recognize that this can be an integer, this can be a string, and I haven't used anything outside of that, but mainly keep it to integers and strings if you can. And you can also say dictionary of a string, for example, a is equal to an integer. And you can use those interchangeably. Like for example, if you were to want to count up all the different A's you'll see, you'll do this. And then you can also print this dictionary so we can see what our dictionary looks like so far. You'll see it's an A pointing to the value of 10 and then 10 pointing to the Cooper codes. You can also do statements like this. You can say if a is in our dictionary, you can say print true, else we can print false. And so let's do some code here just to show you guys an example. So if we run this right now, it's gonna print true because A is in our dictionary. So you'll see A is pointing to the value of 10. If we look for the key B, we're then going to see that it's gonna be false because B is not in our dictionary. And so we can also say if uh, 10 is in our dictionary, you'll see it's the same exact thing because 10 is a key in our dictionary. And so that's kind of how you can check if something is in a dictionary or not in Python. It's important to recognize that we can increment and decrement dictionary values if they are integers. So let's take a look at dictionary a is equal to 10. Let's set this equal to a smaller number like three for now. But if we were to say dictionary of a plus equals one, then dictionary of a is now going to be uh, four. And let's just print the entire dictionary to show you guys what's happening. So you'll see a is now equal to four. And if I were to do dictionary of a minus equals one, then our dictionary we can do down here is going to go back to the three like we'd expect. An important thing to recognize is this plus equals one is a shorthand syntax. And it's pretty much saying dictionary of a is equal to the value of dictionary of a plus one. If dictionary of a is not defined, it's going to run into an error where it's gonna say, hey, this value is not defined and you're trying to add one to it. For example, if we try to do dictionary of B is equal to dictionary of B plus one, it's gonna run into an issue because that's not defined. And I'll show you guys this right here. Okay, all right, it looks like there's a key error, B doesn't exist. And so it's important. In Python, you have to always do logic to say, okay, if it doesn't exist, we have to set it equal to one first. And then you're gonna see, you're not gonna run into the same issue here. And so we should have a B value of two for this code here. Uh, right here. And yes, it's important to recognize is that in Python, you have to set it equal to first. If you try and do plus equals right off the bat, you're going to run into issues. And then for looping through a dictionary, you can say for key comma value in dictionary dot items. This is the most common way I've seen it done. You can pretty much print the string of the key uh, plus, let's see here, pointing to the value string of the value. It's also important to recognize that if you have an integer, it needs to be wrapped around the str so you need to wrap your integer around the string or else it's going to run into an issue and i'll let this code break so you guys can see this you can do python main.py and so it's going to say there's no operand type for integer and string and that's because this key is for uh, the 10 up here this key is an integer so we need to make sure it's wrapped in a string so it's always a string once we do that we're going to have some code where it says a is 3 10 is cooper codes and b is 2. We can also use the values of our dictionaries as the condition for a loop. So this kind of brings a couple things together. So we can say while dictionary of B is greater than or equal to zero, we can print that actually dictionary B value. And then we can go in here and say dictionary of B minus equals one. And this is kind of common in some questions, but you'll see it's gonna go two, one, zero. And then if we print our dictionary, you'll see that the actual values change the entire time. B is now gonna be equal to negative one. So this is an example of using a dictionary value in the condition of your loop in Python. All right, so strings. Strings are pretty simple in Python. I'm just gonna do a quick one here to show you guys an example. Something important in Python is you can do a string dot split by spaces. This is used in so many lead code questions, so it's important that you know this one specifically, is string dot split. If we print this split string that we just made, it's gonna be an array of all those split strings. A, B, C, D, E. As you'd expect, it's splitting by the space. All right, and so now we can say for array string in the split string. So this is some Python syntax where you can say for each thing in this split string array, uh, save that value of the current index into array string. So if we print array string here, it's going to pretty much say, okay, look at A, B first, have it be saved into array string. Look at C, D, C, D is here, and then look at E, E is here. So it works pretty well. Another important piece of Python syntax here is that you can 
then join strings. So this A, B, C, D, E is a array of a bunch of different separate strings. If you want to make all these strings be combined into one larger array, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a string to store it. So let's say result string is equal to empty quotes representing an empty string dot join split string. And so this is going to take all those different indexes in the split string and then bring them together. And so we can print the result string here and you'll see it's going to be that A, B, C, D, E. Um, so all of the things join together and it's going to be one resulting string. This isn't an array. This isn't anything. This is one string and it's a full result. It's kind of surprising how much Python syntax we've already gone over so quickly. But one last important thing is swap syntax. So let's say we have the string Cooper. There's an important thing here is Python strings cannot be modified. So if you want to modify this string, for example, swap values around, you have to put it into a string array, which is super simple. You say list. So use type list and then put the string in there. This is then going to give you this array of all the different values as I'll show you here. So it's C-O-O-P-E-R. And then what we can do for swapping is this. So we can say string array, all right, of zero and string array of one. Let's say we want to swap those two things. We can then do this. Okay, on the other side of the equal sign, we're going to have string array zero equal to string array of one, comma, string array of one, we want now to be equal to string array of zero. This is the common way to swap values in Python, and especially in LeetCode, it's super simple and you can do it in one line, you don't have to store anything. And as you'll see here, if I print this string array, it's going to be swap values. The zero index and the one index, so the C and the O are gonna switch. So C switches with O and now it's OC. O-C-O-P-E-R. And yeah, so that is an interesting way to do that. And let's just go back to above. We can then use a result string again and do the exact same thing where we join this string array. Oh. And then we can print this result string and I'll show you guys here. This is a great example of manipulating a string and then getting a string you want to return. For example, in LeetCode question, you have this full return string here. So this is the video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something here. This was more of just a general overview of how to use Python for lead code, but this should be a great start for approaching some easier questions, maybe even some mediums if you're more familiar with lead code. So good luck.